having a wonderful time this month. It's a month of divine elevation. How many of you have started experiencing divine elevation? If you have started experiencing divine elevation, can I see your hand? You started experiencing divine elevation. Hallelujah. That will be your testimony this month in the name of Jesus. By the time the month will come to an end, your life would have changed, would have been elevated by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just open our Bible to just um, give me uh, that's Isaiah 8, 43 verse 18. And that's um, the, our key verse for the month, Isaiah 43 verse 18. To let us know what God is said to do. It's important you know what God is said to do so that you know how to key in. He's saying, I should remember ye in the former things that consider the things of old. Verse 19. So behold, I will do a new thing. Behold. When you hear the word behold, it means see. Look at it very well. That he will do a new thing. Expect it. Behold, I will do a new thing. And he shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It does not matter how your life has been from the beginning of this year. It does not matter what is happening to our economy. It does not matter the noise that is in the environment around you. The Lord is saying to you that he will do a new thing for you this month in the name of Jesus. And he will make a way in the wilderness. Maybe in your life, it seems you are no longer seeing your signs again. You're no longer seeing light again. You're no longer seeing opportunity again. Everything looks so gloomy. Everything looks so dim. See, I will make a way. I will cause spring of water to flow in that your desert land again in the name of Jesus. In that your life that looks so deserted. That your life that looks so gloomy. The Lord is saying that he will cause rivers of water to flow again in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. So this month we are in a month of divine elevation. And this morning we want to look at a very important topic that says faith, the currency of the spirit. Faith, the currency of the spirit. Does anything you need so you need so dear this very moon, this very season, is faith. There's any concept you need to understand? It's faith. Because our whole life depends on it. Our whole life depends on it. Everything about our Christianity is predicated on faith. That's why it's called the Christian faith. Meaning that if you remove faith from Christianity, everything is in shambles. If you remove faith from Christianity, you are not anything like any other person out there in the world that doesn't know Jesus. The thing that will run, the battery, the fuel that sustains us in this journey is the faith. Hallelujah. No wonder the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith is that fuel through which we can live. Is that thing that can make us survive in this Christian race? If you remove faith from your life, everything will collapse. Hallelujah. It's the foundation of Christian faith. It's the foundation of Christian faith. It's the currency of the Spirit. Faith, the currency of the Spirit. Is that currency through which we can make transaction and do business with God. Hallelujah. In our Christian faith, we don't do business with naira and cobalt, with dollar, with pounds. Those are for the, you know, for the natural realm. Or if you need to do business in the spirit, if you need to buy some good things for yourself in the realm of the spirit, all you need is faith. And I trust God that He will download His faith in your heart this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And your faith shall come alive again in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith, the currency of the spirits. Open your Bible to Hebrew chapter 11. Hebrew chapter 11. Hebrew chapter 11. Verse 1. Then 
Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you have not seen. If you look at that very verse of the scripture, you can pick the word substance and hope. Substance and hope. Meaning that before you can start to exercise faith, you must first of all have hope. There has to be something you are hoping at. There has to be something that you are expecting. There has to be a desire in your heart before you can begin to manifest faith. Why is it that so many people do not have faith? Because they don't have hope. No more dreams in life. No more vision. They have no expectation. They are in the world of hopelessness. Everything looks so gloomy. They can no longer see the light. They can no longer see afar off. They cannot see themselves living a great life, having a great life, being all that God has called them to be. There is no hope at all. So hope is the foundation of faith. Before you can manifest faith, you must have something, you must have a goal. Hope is like a goal. I want to achieve this thing by the end of this month. I want to achieve that by the end of this year. You have a target. You have a goal. You have an expectation. You have a dream. You have a vision. A burning desire. And when you've gotten that, then you will need the process. You need the, the mission. How do I achieve my vision? How do I achieve my dream? And then faith comes into play. Now faith is the substance of thing hoped for. Through faith, you can substantiate the thing you are hoping for. You can make it real. With faith, you can pull that thing to yourself. So faith is a process of pulling your hope, your desire to yourself, making it a substance, making it real, making it natural, hallelujah. Bringing it from the world of the spirit and making it natural. It's true faith. It's true faith that we can get that done, hallelujah. Faith is all we need. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Let's look at Hebrew chapter uh, from the same place we are reading, verse 2. Let's read verse 2. It says, For by it the elders obtain the good reports. Continue. Through faith, we understand that the walls we are framed by the word of God. The world that you and I live, we are framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen, we are not made of things which will appear. The things that we see are not made of things. They are not made with physical things. They are made of things that, you, that, is not, that are intangible. With the intangible, you can get the tangible. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being there, yes, speak it. Abel, through faith, through faith, his name was written in the annals of eternity. Through faith, he offered a more excellent sacrifice than king. Do you discover that even to give is a faith work? Hallelujah. Is a faith work. Through faith, he offered. Because he trusted in God. Hallelujah. Because he loved and trusted God. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had his testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
But he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Anything that you don't do with faith in this Christian life cannot, it cannot be, God can never see such. God can never be moved by any of those things. God is not moved by your tears, is not moved by your emotion, is not moved by sentiment. What moves God is faith. And when you come to Him by faith, He will not deny you that thing. When you make any request by faith, it cannot be, it can never be denied you because He loves faith. He, he enjoys it, He loves it to know that you depend on Him, that you trust Him. As you are now, and then you have a little boy or your child, you know that you have the capacity to help him. And he doesn't trust you. Doesn't even ask you. You now go and be crying about and maybe telling others, we know you have the capacity. How do you view that kind of child? That kind of son? Say, he doesn't believe in me. And because of that, let him sort himself out. Or God lies it when we put all our faith in him. You no, know, sometimes people say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's not about the faith in God. Faith in God has to be complete. Has to be exclusively God. You don't say, Lord, if you don't do it, I have another plan. You don't bow to him and then go and bow to bow. And say, if God cannot do it, let me, let me find another way. Faith in God is absolute. Absolute. Because you believe in the integrity of him that has promised. You believe in his words. He said that heaven and earth can pass away. But not a title, not a jot in my word will fail. When we believe God that much, there's no power on earth. They have not born that demon that can stop you. No force on earth can stop the one that believes in God, that has faith. Faith is that magnetic power, that magnetic force that pulls things your way, that pulls your desire, that makes your desire things realize. Is that force that pulls things your way? Is that force that pulls things your way? Is that force that puts things your way? Everything we have has been given to us. Everything we have has been given to us. Every chance that one by strength. Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us. With all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. In what? Christ. The blessings that are in Christ Jesus. As you are seated here and you, are, you know you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You are carrying the omnipotent inside of you. You are carrying Christ in you. And the blessing you need is in Christ. There is no other one coming. They are in Christ. They are inside of you. All you need is faith to transact, to pull that blessing from that realm of the spirit into the realm of the physical. And what's that currency for pulling is faith. All you need, you're a young girl, you're asking God, oh, how will I marry? Everything is in you. A young man will say, oh, there's no money. It is in you. Everything has been given in Christ Jesus. But how much faith do you have to draw? How much faith do you have to draw? How much faith do you have to pull? The faith will work when you are in Christ. It works when you are in spirit. It's a spiritual currency through which you can make transaction. And why you don't have what you are expecting is not because God doesn't want to give it to you. But it has been given to you. But the problem is there is no faith. You lack what? The instrument of transaction. Which is faith. The houses you need, the better life you need, they are in Christ Jesus. When he gave Jesus to us, he gave us what? Everything. 
But we need to transact. We need to pull as much as we desire. Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe. Everything we do in this Christian grace is predicated upon our feet. First John chapter 5, verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. Faith is a source of the source of our victory in this life, this side of the earth. It is a source of our victory. First John 5, verse 4. Oh, if we can get faith, we can get substance for the thing you are believing. Nothing can fail you. There will be no defeat in your life. Say, for whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And when he says overcome the world, he means the world, the problems of the world, the evil of the world, the devils in the world. The issues of the world, everything that is of the world, whatsoever is born of whosoever is born of God, the capacity to, to, to overcome the world is in you. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The victory through which you can overcome the world is what? Your faith. Please, can you give me this verse again in NLT? If you have it there, NLT. The victory. The man that has faith, that has torn his faith loose, is a man that will have victory in life. Is a man that will live in vic constant victory. Constant victory. For every child of God defeats the evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. You see, it does not matter what you are facing in your life. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life right now. It doesn't matter the dungeon you are into right now. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter, you know, the, the circumstances of life. All you need is faith. All you need is faith. For every child of God defeats this evil world the currency of faith that is why faith failure in christian life is synonymous to heart failure you know heart failure in the, in the natural when they say your heart has failed you what does it mean the person has died right when your heart fails you you can't longer live again there can't be any oxygen you know tra you know processing you again so therefore in the christian race if your faith fails you you can't continue. So if there's anything you must service, if there's anything you must make sure that you keep alive is your faith. Strong men last in this race because of their faith in God. Their faith in God is not on any other thing physical, it's not in your flesh. The opposite of faith is fear, and fear happens when you are in the flesh. It happens when you are in the natural realm. It happens when the, your environment is saturated with things that are anti faith that pulls you into the physical. Remember, the blessing you have is in Christ. Therefore, you must remain in Christ to be able to substantiate them, to be able to pull them your way. And anytime your gaze is no longer Christ, anytime your gaze is no longer Jesus, Anytime you start looking away from Jesus, and start looking at your circumstances, and start looking at your, looking at your inadequacies, and start looking at the things that are going wrong in your life, in your family, and start looking at your own strength, and no more the strength of Him who has called you, you begin to sink. You begin to sink. Remember when Peter stopped to look at Jesus, he began to sink. So as you begin to look on Jesus, as you begin to look on Jesus, as we begin to look on Jesus, as we begin to stay in Jesus, your faith will be alive. And when your faith is alive, there's no amount of demon in this life that can stop you. 
no force in this life can stop the one that his faith is alive not at all whosoever is born of God overcome the world we shall overcome the world in the name of Jesus it does not matter what is happening in your life right now because you are a child of God as your faith begins to rise this morning as your faith begins to rise you will not live here the same way you are come because your faith must rise and as it rises no circumstance or situation will drown you again in the mighty name of Jesus your hope shall come my life again in the name of Jesus you will begin to dream again in the name of Jesus no matter how down you are strength strength by the spirit of God shall rise from within you in the mighty name of Jesus there shall be no more defeat again in your life in the name of Jesus the last defeat you saw will be the last you ever see because the faith of God shall arise after 60 verse 1 you shall arise and shine because your light has come child of God light has come to you this morning and you will arise and shine you will not remain the same again I say you will not remain the same again your family cannot be the same again your career can't be the same again your business can't be the same again your relationship, your marriage can't be the same again no, it can't be the same it can't be the same when faith comes, everything changes when faith comes, God is in your case when faith comes, the omnipotence is triggered when faith comes, impossibility becomes possible if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Only if you can believe. Oh, only if you can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Are possible. Are possible. Matthew 17, verse 19. Matthew 17, verse 19. Faith is a substance of thing hoped for. So after what the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? We all know this story. The disciples of Jesus were faced with a difficult situation. A man that was dumb, that cannot speak. And they tried their best. And they could not resolve that situation. And they brought it to Jesus. Let's see verse 20. He said, you don't have enough faith. Could it be that the failures that you have experienced in your life is because you don't have enough faith? Could it be that the trials and the defeats that has, you know, colored your life this past days because there is lack of faith? So Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed as small as a mustard seed do you know how mustard seed is very tiny and even if they bring it to your nose just with your breath it can just you know fly away mustard seed you could say to this mountain move from here to there hallelujah you could say to your situation move from here to there you could say to that mountain in your life, that obvious mountain that have terrorized your life all these years, that shame that have been in your life all these years, you've been managing that you're packaging it, and say, that is my lot in life. Jesus, not give you a load, call, not give you any load, any load that will break, that will break you. Jesus, not give you that kind of load. He said, my yoke is easy. It is easy. He never gave you any kind of load that will squash you. You can say to this star mountain this morning, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing would be impossible. Nothing would be what? Impossible. Nothing would be impossible. I would like to begin to picture that mountain in your life. Picture that situation that has held you bound all this while. If you can have enough faith, faith in God in the second service I will begin to teach you how you can 
you know, how you can begin to grow that faith. How you can begin to walk on that faith. The environment of that faith. But if you can have faith, nothing shall be impossible with you. Your dreams will be actualized. You will rise again. You will fulfill your purpose if only you can have faith. Yes, I know that thing that happened to you brought you so low. It, 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 it crushed you like as if you can never rise, you can never rise again. It made you feel that God is no longer with you. It made you begin to, you know, ask yourself some questions. Is God still with me? The situation in your life, many people have laughed at you. And then it's looking as if there's no hope. If you can turn on the light of faith, if you can believe in Him, if you can believe when you pray, all that you desire when you pray, believe, 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 believe. Someone's faith is coming alive this morning in the name of Jesus. Someone's faith is coming alive together today in the name of Jesus. You will run again in the mighty name of Jesus. You will chase your dream again in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live that beautiful life you have ever dreamt of in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone is saying, oh, look at my Christian life. I've fallen so low. I've done a lot of things. I can't continue again. I no longer have the capacity to stand again. You feel so fury and so dirty. God has not forsaken you. Trust in Him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your strength. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. He shall direct your paths. He causes to stand again. He will cause us to stand again. Trust in Him. That's the basis of our faith. Is because God can be trusted. His word is infallible. His words, they are infallible. It's not fall to the ground. Has He said anything concerning you? Watch it. It will come to pass in Jesus' name. Behold. It shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain. May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. You must believe. Some people pray, they don't believe that their prayers are heard. They don't even believe that prayers have crossed the ceiling. If you believe, you know, faith does not negate the facts. Yes, you may have some obvious facts, but stand on the truth. The truth of God's word. The truth is that you have been healed. The fact might be that there are still signs of infirmity. But the truth is that you have been healed. What do you do? The person of faith will stay on the truth. And get the substance, get the word of God, get the passages, get the places where God has spoken the truth concerning that situation. And we will stay on it. Stay on it. Stay on it until it becomes a reality. Stay on it until it crystallizes into your reality. Until it crystallizes into your reality. That's what the person of faith will do. But if you're not a person of faith, you will dwell on the things, the signs you're seeing. Stay on, if you will not doubt in your heart, believe. And all you have asked, all you have desired, shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. I say shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's be on our feet as we pray this morning. Open your mouth and talk, talk to God this morning. I don't know that situation, that mountain. You can say mountain move this morning and it will move. It will obey your words. It will obey your words.